So hello everyone, welcome to WizConnect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor, part of customer success team at Tableau. And I welcome you to the fourth season of WizConnect. WizConnect is all about how we can connect individuals who are passionate about data visualization, storytelling, best practices, tips and tricks with respect to Tableau. So we have a YouTube channel, go ahead, subscribe to it. So all the sessions which are hosted in Disconnect are uploaded to our YouTube channel. Also a big shout out to all the Tableau visionaries, which was out, I think yesterday. So I think some, some of the names I can see who has presented in Disconnect also, and we have learned a lot from them. So congratulations to everyone. Jim Denner is there on the call. I think shout out to him, learned a lot from him also. And it's great to see diversity in this big cohort of Tableau visionaries. So I think that is something it will give inspiration for each and one of us to go ahead and get inspired and learn from them over here. With that, let me go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. His name is Nir Smigel. Uh, Nir is a part of data visualization and analytics CUE lead at Zoom Info. He's a Tableau public featured author and he has three views of the day. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Nir to talk about data visualization and storytelling best practices. Nir, over to you. Thank you, Sagar. Let me share my screen. All right. It is visible, right? Yes, Ned, you're good to go. All right, so hi everyone. I'm happy and excited to be here, uh, part of uh, VizConnect. Thank you, Sagar, for uh, inviting me. Uh, today, we're gonna talk mostly about uh, data visualization. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna tell you about a bit about my uh, uh, Tableau journey. Um, we'll talk about why data visualization is so important. Uh, we'll talk a bit about uh, pre-attentive attributes, and then uh, the main part of the session will be uh, for me sharing with you uh, significant best practices uh, related with data visualizations that I learned along the way. So this is me, Nirs Milga. My day job, uh, job, as mentioned, is Analytics uh, Center of Excellence uh, lead uh, at uh, Zoom Info. Uh, I started uh, with Tableau as an analyst approximately six, or I guess maybe seven, it would be more correct, uh, years ago. Um, I'm a husband and father of three amazing kids. I love music and I love to viz. Uh, you can see that uh, vising is part of my day job and vising is part of my uh, free time. And I can only be grateful working in something that I love to do also uh, when I'm not uh, getting paid for it. So let's start a bit uh, with my Tableau uh, public with uh, uh, journey. Um, I think that uh, going through it will maybe put uh, more context on the uh, next slide. So it all started like seven years ago. Uh, my first experience with Tableau was uh, as a financial as a analyst uh, when I was working for uh, HP. Uh, already then I was drawn to, to data and visualization, but my toolbox was mainly uh, Excel. So you can only imagine how boosted I felt when my organization started uh, to use uh, uh, Tableau. Uh, one uh, year later, I moved to the BI department and I started to work with Tableau more closely. And then I remember that uh, our manager sent us a Viz of the Day uh, mail that he was uh, subscribed to with the iconic uh, Beatles Viz by the awesome Adam McCann. I was like that. Our, uh, I said like, man, Tableau can do that. And that was the point that I was so inspired and it made me like set a goal uh, to have my own Viz of the day in one of the days. So I started to enhance my toolbox. I uh, used all the amazing content uh, uh, we have uh, online with the data farm community. Uh, and, and I started to like uh, gathering uh, all sorts of articles and, and uh, uh, blogs and forums 
uh, to start to enhance my, my toolbox. And then I, I felt uh, enough comfortable to publish my first uh, Tableau uh, public uh, viz. Um, it was about the Eurovision, the time that Israel uh, took uh, uh, the first place. And uh, approximately one year later, I had the honor uh, to achieve my goal and to recognize uh, as the first uh, viz of the day. Um, <clears throat> uh, it was symbolic uh, that it was also uh, uh, was about the Beatles, uh, the one that first inspired me to start using Tableau Public uh, uh, by uh, Adam McCann. Later on, uh, I got the uh, two uh, um, feature author, uh, sorry, recognition, and then I had two uh, views of the days, um, which uh, all three of them are related to the hobbies that I was mentioning in the, in the first uh, slide. I find it interesting. I, four months ago, I started my first blog, and then I was honored to be recognized by the freshly uh, Tableau um, a visionary initiative uh, belong to Adamico uh, called the Tableau Next. And I'm really excited and uh, to see what the, uh, the next steps uh, uh, will be and, and um, what I will uh, do uh, with related to Tableau. So that's me, that's my journey. And now um, let's move to talk about data visualization. So, we all the time hear about data visualization. visualization. If you are here, obviously uh, you are engaging or interested in, in uh, data visualization. And I want to talk about why is it so important. So um, you must heard this a uh, couple of times uh, before. Uh, in God we trust, all others uh, bring data. I know I use this sentence uh, uh, a lot. And it was attributed to uh, Edward Deming who was an engineer, statistician, sorry, statistician, professor, author, lecturer, and manage, management uh, consultant. Uh, and he said it already in uh, 1986. Two, year, two years later, he had another famous quote uh, saying uh, that without data, you're just another person uh, with an opinion. And you know what? We all sure listen because now everyone talks about how they want to be data driven and we keep generating more and more data. Actually, the amount of data that we're generating is growing exponentially. This year, we generated uh, 100 zettabytes of, of data. Let me stop for a minute and talk about what is zettabyte because it's a really uh, large number. It is one with 21 zeros of bytes. And this equals to approximately 2 billion DVDs. And to help you realize it a bit more, if we took 200 billion DVDs and stuck them together, we would have length that is worth eight times the distance from the Earth uh, to the Moon. <laughs> so that's a lot. And uh, here are the, the, the details for those who, for those of you who want to try the calculation uh, themselves. So that's a lot of data. We are generating tons of data, and this is like one portion of what we're expecting to get to. Um, and because we are generating so many data, some of it um, we uh, put into context and show it as information. But eventually, even we have tons of data and we have like too much information, we're bombarding with information on a daily basis. Um, so we have a lot of it, but uh, eventually um, we don't have, we don't seem to have enough uh, insight. And this is where data visualization uh, steps in. So there is a, many definition of data visualization and I relate mostly to this, to, to this one. Data visualization is the graphical representation of mostly quantitative uh, information data. So uh, we know that the amount of data is exposed, uh, we're exposed to is growing exponentially. Uh, the goal is to have maximum insight with minimum time and effort. Like this is, if we conclude everything to why we're doing data visualization and what is our goal, uh, this is what we want to get to. We want to use data visualization in order to have maximum insight from our visualization or dashboard or whatever we do to uh, deliver insight. And we want uh, the users that use this uh, will not have to invest a lot of time and effort. 
and let me put it here again, because this is uh, very important. And every time that I'm preparing a data visualization um, and now working with with data, I'm asking me, I'm asking my, um, myself this question: Am I giving the maximum insight that will require minimum time and effort from my user? Now let's talk about pre-attentive attributes. So we said we want to get uh, uh, to a minimal effort uh, for our users in understanding our data story. So one thing that will help us getting there is to understand pre-attentive attributes. Before we go into what is it, what it is, I want to introduce you to Stefan Pugh, if you don't know him already. He's an IT innovator, consultant, and an educator. And in my eyes, he's one of the um, cornerstones of uh, data visualization. He talks about vision and sensory memory, uh, and he compared it to our uh, other uh, senses with uh, this uh, interesting uh, analogy. And he has also a very recommended book called uh, Show Me the Numbers, if you wish to go deeper and uh, understand all the, the bits and bytes of it, and it's very interesting. <clears throat> so let me start by saying I'm not a brain researcher, by no means. I rely on uh, academic uh, uh, studies uh, uh, that, in my experience, were proven to be uh, effective. So, preemptive attributes uh, takes place in sensory memory. It allows people to retain impressions of visual uh, information uh, quickly and unconsciously. If we understand the basic uh, of uh, um, uh, of that, we can uh, use that to um, help us achieve uh, our goal. So let's quickly cover some of the basics with a few examples. Here's a classic example. If I ask you how many fives you see uh, in, in that picture, how long it will take you to count it? Actually, what, what you will do is you will go and start scanning this image and say, OK, this is the first five. And okay, here's the second one, and third one, here's the fourth, and you have five, five. I did that many times, and it was about 20 seconds that it took me to, to count all the, all the fives here. And if I would put it that way, and I'll ask you the same question, how many fives are there in that image? So it's right, the time, the amount of time tremendously uh, lowered into one second, which is a huge difference. <clears throat> so here are basic pre-attentive uh, pre uh, attributes. Um, look at each one of them and see if you can easily identify the distinct mark, like this one and this one and this one here and the big circle. Um, <clears throat> and the idea is that pre-attentive attributes are basically divided into uh, four groups. Uh, form, which is the largest one, color, uh, spatial position, and uh, movement. But not all uh, attributes uh, created equally. And when we want to uh, understand if it's quantitatively perceived, then only uh, length and position are quantitatively perceived. And I'll, I'll explain what it means. While width, size, and contrast, these ones are uh, considered as to be limited uh, use. And what it means, it means that while we can identify that this circle is way bigger than all these circles, um, if I'll ask you by how much it's bigger than uh, the other circles, you'll have a hard time to answer that. But if I would give you this picture and ask you by how much this one is bigger than the others, uh, then it would be <clears throat> more easily for you to, uh, to answer that it's approximately 30% uh, higher than the other that we have uh, here. So when you understand uh, this, uh, the parentative attributes, the task of choosing the right chart when it comes uh, will be done more easily and more effectively. Uh, let's look on uh, an example. Uh, let's look at, at the uh, Superstall uh, uh, data, and we're looking on uh, uh, sales by uh, subcategory. And I would ask you, 
which category uh, represent the highest cells. You will go the same process again, you will scan this, and you will see that, okay, this is phone, phones uh, is the highest category. For me, it, looks about, uh, it took about five seconds. Now, if you use the form as pre-attentive attributes to represent the data in that way, so now you will see, you will see that this is the uh, longest uh, uh, bar chart. This is phones. It will be quicker to identify, approximately 1.5 uh, seconds. But if I ask you which uh, is the third, is the second and the third uh, category, then we will look. Okay, this is the first one. This is probably the second one, the second one, but which one is the third? This one or this one? Okay, it can, it can be probably this one. And it take time, uh, for me it took uh, 10 seconds approximately, and I wasn't even sure at the end. Uh, but if we uh, use orientation as well, to sort it from largest to uh, smallest, uh, um, the, then our brain will be will much appreciate it, as uh, it can be easily identified that uh, uh, phones is the highest one, then chairs, uh, then blenders, and the task of maximum insight with minimum time, uh, time for this specific uh, uh, business question is much easier now. <clears throat> Now, more detailed example, adding time uh, dimension and looking on profit uh, per sub uh, category. So, looking at this chart will require much effort uh, to understand business question like which month or category is the highest. And, and it will be hard to identify trends that uh, will make us uh, uh, take business uh, decisions. So, the second group of pre attentive attribute is color. And you see that by adding that, uh, to the to the view, um, users can now take um, answer the the business question that I mentioned before much easier um, because they can easily spot trends. They can easily see that the tables are the lowest, and this uh, here the copiers on March on, on March was the highest uh, category um, uh, in uh, in the specific months uh, that uh, that uh, had the highest profit. And if we combine both of them, both color and form, um, uh, lengths to be specific, uh, it will help us even more to answer a, a business question like which is the highest month uh, and for all the subcategories. You can easily see that this is November and which category is the highest, we said, and also to identify the trend that lies in between per month and per uh, subcategory. Another example, let's look at both color, uh, profit and, uh, and sales. So we already look, saw that color can help us uh, to distinguish between the differences uh, more easily. But um, we said that we'll, uh, it will have, uh, we'll have uh, issues if we'll uh, ask by how much um, uh, each category is bigger than the other. For example, uh, can you tell by looking only on the colors that chairs, this uh, here, is three times bigger than bookcases? Look, if we look here, this is chairs, it's like 90, approximately uh, $90,000, and bookcases is $30,000. And by looking bookcases and chairs, by looking the uh, the shade difference, it will be very hard to determine that this one is darker three times than, than this one, right? And this is, goes back again to the uh, qualitatively, uh, quantitatively perceived uh, uh, attribute, and color is not one of them. And here is where um, a position uh, comes into place. Uh, using scatterplot may require a few seconds for a setup time. The user will need to understand uh, what measures you see, what is on the x-axis, what on the y-axis. In that example, we have sales on the y-axis and profit on the x-axis. But one process, uh, we can relatively easily identify the highest and the lowest categories uh, that we had to, and, and we also can assess by how much they bigger from each other. For example, phone again is the highest revenue. It's uh, a little bit higher than, uh, uh, than the chairs. Uh, copiers are the highest profits, uh, tables are the lowest profits, 
and faster ends, uh, fastener sorry, is the lowest uh, SL category. The last group of uh, pre-attentive uh, attribute is motion. Uh, motion is a powerful uh, uh, pre-attentive uh, attribute. Our attention easily drawn by to movement. And actually, if we compare it to na uh, in nature, there are many raptors that rely on motion to catch uh, their prey uh, because it's instantly our, our attention grabs to something that moves. In business, however, the usage of it is less common. Uh, but I still want to show you a visualization I prepared a long time ago when the COVID uh, had just uh, struck. Uh, obviously, I would uh, do it uh, differently now, and this is the trick. The longer we are doing business, the longer, the, the more skilled we are, and hope we, all, all the time we can uh, add improvements to our previous work. But for the sake of, of, of this example, um, if we'll see the, the motion that I used uh, uh, in that, um, we can see like uh, the spread uh, of the COVID by geographical uh, portion and with the, um, uh, the R uh, uh, calculations for each country. And we can uh, easily spot uh, the, um, uh, the characteristics, uh, characteristics of, the, of the spread by geographical uh, uh, portion. And this is an, an example also for another uh, pre-attentive uh, uh, attribute, which is uh, uh, spatial uh, positioning. And looking at uh, West Europe, we can see that this group here um, has suffered the most uh, by the uh, uh, COVID effect. For the time that uh, this was the uh, visualization was done, it was like uh, more than a year ago in April uh, 2020. All right, so that was about the uh, pre-attentive uh, um, attributes. And now let's talk about data visualization uh, best practices. So the first one is to make sure that the uh, numbers are comparable, that we always compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges. And what do I mean by that? Here's a, a, a visualization um, that uh, I prepared like way long time ago. And this is a good example of not uh, the best choice using the, the chart type because as you can see here, we are, I'm using circles to, uh, um, to show the different sizes of uh, each one of the um, uh, circles here. Um, and we already discussed that circles are not the best way uh, uh, to use if we want, try to use like a quantitatively perceived uh, uh, um, size comparisons because it's hard. It's very, very, very hard for us to uh, um, determine by how much this circle is bigger than this circle without looking into the numbers. So this is an example of. Um, but the uh, uh, chart I chose, uh, choice, I would definitely use bar charts for that uh, if I would do this uh, visualization uh, uh, today. But just to give you an example, and going back to, to comparing uh, uh, apples to oranges, so a lot of time if, if you choose to use dual access, make sure you compare uh, the same uh, units. So don't put, put different units uh, of measurement as can be seen here, you have revenue on the y-axis, and we have units sold uh, uh, on this y-axis. Uh, the revenue is in dollars, and it, started, it starts from 150,000 to 400,000, and the units is an, in, in a way different uh, uh, scale. It's even the, 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 not the same uh, uh, unit. And when, when we, once we do it, uh, the, our resolution will be prone to bias interpretation of the numbers. As user may, may think that uh, March here uh, was the turning point in which revenue surpassed uh, units sold, which is basically has no sense. So <clears throat> this is Stefan Few again, and I will quote him saying that it's inappropriate to use uh, uh, more than one quantitative scale on a single uh, axis because of the things that uh, uh, we, we said. So the way to uh, treat that and how to show it like in a proper way 
So the first option is to uh, divide uh, and conquer, like to have a separate Y axis um, for each one of the measures and a mutual access. Uh, so now we can compare it and the data would not be biased. If there, uh, if there is an urge or a need to put them, uh, the, both of them on the same chart, then one way to do that is to uh, begin from a mutual uh, starting point and normalize it by uh, uh, 200, uh, 100 percent, and then just measure the changes uh, for this uh, according to this uh, starting point for each one of the um, of the measures. All right, so. Another example of uh, make sure your numbers are comparable. And here I uh, borrowed uh, uh, examples from the awesome and fresh visionary for the third time, uh, Mr. Kevin uh, Flerage. Uh, I could not put it better, so I show his uh, visualization uh, as is. I think uh, the, the use of a stacked bar chart, as you can see uh, on the left hand side here, is a good example of most common uh, bad practice that uh, um, people tend to do. Well, the problem here is that uh, we can easily compare the first category, the talk is one, uh, because it starts from the same uh, line. But if we try to compare the sizes of the rest of the categories, then we'll have a hard time to do that because it does not start from the same uh, line. And you remember we're talking about, we, we, we're discussing about uh, um, uh, about it in the pre-attentive uh, attributes uh, when we say that the order in the sorting matters. So the way to show it like uh, in a more proper way uh, that will require less effort from the users to understand the size the differences for each one of the categories is to split the, uh, the views to have a separate categories for each one of the, of the month. And then you can easily compare the accessories, the appliances, the binders and the bookcases and to see which one is bigger and even by how much. The other uh, example that I, I took from Kevin, in, and I know that a lot has been said about uh, the use of pie chart. And to make long story short, my two cents uh, uh, for that are this. If you have more than two categories, don't use pie chart. Our mind will have to, uh, will have a hard time trying to understand the size the differences as there are angles and radiuses that we need to uh, calculate in order to compare the, the differences. And we said that circles are not the best choice for uh, to have like a qualitatively perceived uh, measures. Um, so yeah, if you have to, I may be harsh on that, but my, my take on that will be if you have two categories, Pie chart is good. More than that, I would not use pie chart. I would like to show another example. A this done by uh, uh, Raknak. I hope I pronounce it well. Uh, showing pie charts uh, alternatives. And um, if we need to show like the part of a whole uh, over time, then this one here, uh, the line uh, dual axis with an array is a good option. And I tend to use it uh, a lot. Uh, a general simple bar chart like we, we see here is like the um, the best way to to show the uh, to show it we will our mind will have to work um, and the list uh, um, the list uh, uh, hard um, when we compare the uh, the bar charts and again the lower uh, lower uh, example with radial uh, uh, usage like circles and radial bar chart, and another radial uh, bar chart is less uh, uh, suggested to use because they are not serving the goals that we wish to use. So bar chart, okay, but then you will say uh, correctly that it does not represent a uh, part of a whole. We do see the differences between them, uh, but we don't so see the, the part of each one from the whole, and in some cases we will want to show that. So. My go-to with that, and uh, my favorite pie chart uh, alternative uh, is that one, to have uh, uh, the goodies from all worlds, to have a bar chart that can be easily compared and to represent it as a part of a whole. 
Um, um, this case, we are showing region uh, sales by region in 2021. And most of the time, I use the, this visualization when I try to visualize part of a whole in Tableau. Okay, remember Deming? He said that without data, you are just another person with an opinion. And I would add to that, and many also that I saw will add to that, is that without an opinion, you are just another person with the data. Um, <clears throat> and what do I mean uh, by that? Let's go back to the uh, example that I showed before, uh, monthly profit by a subcategory. Uh, you can see that tables is a problematic uh, uh, product. We already uh, we lose money uh, each month constantly on table. And my uh, opinion on that, if you may, is we should do something with the product manager of of uh, of the tables, and the credit for that uh, goes to to Kevin uh, as well. <laughs> he tweeted about it uh, with a, a cool visualization that he made. Um, but again, uh, what what I mean is that. If you if we have an opinion, if it, if it's relevant, we need to express it, and we need to make our numbers uh, have meaning. So saying that our sales were seventy five thousand uh, um, dollars in December twenty one, simply by that does not say much. But here saying that it was twenty k lower than the former months and coloring with red uh, to express our opinion that saying it is bad, um, now the user can hopefully make something out of it. He knows that the sales are going with not good direction, we are decreasing from the previous months and maybe we should do something about it. Here's another example I'm working lately. It's not finished yet, but I took some uh, examples to show you. So this is like showing the whole picture, showing sales one time uh, with a comparison to the previous period and another time with a comparison uh, to, to last year. And you see that it is good relatively to last year, maybe not that good if you look on it in the, on the entire trend. And it was not good uh, compared to the uh, previous uh, period. In this case, uh, it is weak. Um, so now when someone sees that, he gets full picture that sees, okay, sales, it's 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 good like if you compare it to previous week but uh, if it's trend if it's trend related and the better comparison here is like last year uh, last week last year then we have a problem and we need to attend it the third one uh, the third best practice that i want to talk about is to make sure that your insights are actionable Okay, we show that something is, is good or bad. We show that something is not working. But um, if you can, you should um, give your uh, users something to work with. Hopefully, uh, um, <clears throat> for example, like a, um, a focal point, uh, uh, um, some, fo some business focal points that will have something to do, to do with that. And what do I mean by that? If I go to that visualization, <clears throat> so this visualization compares uh, periods, periods over period. We have sales, we have profit, we have uh, profit ratio. This is our three measures, uh, uh, high level. And then we can see that the sales and profit are decreasing uh, for the specific months that we are comparing, and the profit ratio is increasing. But if we try to understand the root cause, if we try to understand what is it coming from, so we can do something with it. So we have uh, the ability to drill down. We can, uh, if I'm a, a product manager, then I will look um, which product is a. Uh, causes the, the, the things to uh, go, go south. And in this case, it's technology. And if I want, I can open it, it and drill down and see like in more uh, details, what are the specific products that uh, uh, put me down? In, in this case, machines. 
And <clears throat> when I drill down into even further, I get the specific product. And if I know the product manager for this one, I can address and I can ask what is going on. I can generate um, a, an, an alert or a subscription that we'll have on a constant basis. So we'll have some, something to work with. Uh, if I'm a country manager, for example, so I can ask where I can go. I can see like in the central uh, district, this was uh, the only one that was uh, um, increasing uh, period of, over period, but the east one <clears throat> has decreased the most uh, substantially. <clears throat> I can open it and I can look again here. I can identify the Delaware uh, uh, district manager and address to him. And you understand my point. Give your users something to work with, hopefully focal point to, to address and make sure your insights are actionable. Lastly, I want to talk about colors. Colors are very important in telling our story and the use of proper uh, colors is very important. And the fourth best uh, practice that I wish to, wish to talk about is the, the use of accessible uh, KPI colors. Do good with your users, don't use traffic light colors. This is how colorblind uh, people see it. And not all colorblind, specifically uh, Donatorapia colorblind, I hope I, I'm saying it correctly. And, and in my opinion, green uh, traffic light are not very aesthetic and adds very uh, noise to the view, but it's really a matter of, uh, of uh, taste. And <clears throat> we can use, instead of the use of green light, we can use like blue, blue, red, which is the default uh, uh, use uh, by Tableau. If we drag a um, 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 continuous measure to the, to the color, this is really the, the default, uh, orange, mostly most time for bad and blue most time for, uh, for good. If we don't like blue, blue and orange, this is okay. Uh, we can use red, black alternative uh, that highlights only the things that need to be addressed and use neutral color for, those, for the, the things that don't require attention. And to summarize that, um, this is like the, the, the common uh, options. Don't use red and green for good and bad. This is at the common alternative, uh, red, uh, sorry, orange and blue and red and, uh, and black. And this is how colorblind sees that. And personally, my, my favorite uh, are this one, the Tokis and Bordo, uh, dark red uh, um, colors, uh, or uh, simply saturated uh, blue and red. Any questions? I've been talking a lot. Hey, thank you, Neil, for sharing all the best practices around data visualization and storytelling. So if you have any questions for Neil, you can just go ahead and put in the chat on the Q&A tab. I will be happy to go ahead and ask him. So I, I have one question, Neil, in the, in the meantime, everyone is just uh, putting their questions over there. Uh, wh what has been your a journey in terms of Tableau, right? When you created your first phase on Tableau Public, all the best practices which you have mentioned over there, uh, what was that motivation behind, right? I have to go ahead and improve that, right? Because that is one thing which I see in most of individuals. I, I take my example over here. I think sometimes we stop, right? Saying that, yes, this is the best I have done. I will not be able to go and improve myself. But what has been your motivation saying that, this was my first phase on Tableau Public and the journey which you have gone and achieved after that. So going back to this one, in, in that case, it was very distinct. Uh, my, my first uh, motivation. Uh, let me share it again. So this was my first motivation. I, I, I was a financial analyst. I was like, doing Excel, uh, <laughs> engaging with Excel to create like some kind of creativity into boring finance uh, tables. And I did, I, I, I like to do that. And 
when I saw the capabilities of Tableau, especially this uh, viz by uh, by Adam McCann, this what opened my eyes. This was this was like the turning point for me to, to say, okay, this is amazing. Tableau can create like amazing. We can create uh, amazing stuff with Tableau. I didn't know possible. I want to be like that. I want to be viz of the day. But again, in order to be to get there, I need to improve my. Um, my arsenal of uh, to, my my tool arsenal. I have to um, uh, have like more and more uh, uh, skills, uh, at least for me to be confident to publish the first uh, Tableau public viz. Not saying to be good enough uh, to be considered as a, as a viz of the day, and like the constantly be inspired by viz of the day, like setting a subscription to get uh, the daily inspiration uh, by mail. Uh, for the viz of the day, looking out uh, on uh, talented uh, authors, follow them, reading blogs. This is all create motivation. And if you are love data visualization, like me, it's like a paradise for you. There is a lot of things to do. There's a lot of people to look up to, and it's only up to you if you can go and uh, improve your skills and be best to have viz of the day, to be considered fe featured author, and to go move and move to be like best in what you do to give uh, to, to to provide like the the, the best data visualization um, uh, that will highlight the creativity and the um, uh, analytics i guess so definitely this was the one for me and trigger the trigger was that and the the, the environment the community was the enabling uh, environment for me to to do so yeah, and then I think one thing which you mentioned about that viz of the day, right? It's already sitting in your mailbox, the inspiration. You have to just go ahead and get excited about it and follow your passion. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Ajay well, no, is please. asking, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I just want to, to complete the, the sentence. There are so many talented uh, uh, authors, and if you are getting uh, an inspiration by mail each day, and for most of the visits, you can download it and look on the back of it and how people created it. It's it's a lot of inspiration and um, and you can only get better uh, doing so. Yeah. So Ajay is asking from you, what are the challenges you faced while choosing the right visualization and explain them to your users? Yeah, so this is a very good question. There is actually one slide that I didn't show here. Yeah, this one. So I struggle with this question every day. There are tons of data visualization type. Most of them require skills to, to create, not out of the box uh, of the blog. And that, like the, it can be like many uh, aspects and uh, tools to to do that. So I was I created this uh, this uh, chart using resources uh, from uh, the community, using uh, resources from the web, the database uh, catalog, and by all what I according to my experience for each one of uh, data visualization type, which you can see here, we had parts of a whole we discussed. We have size comparison, we have time series, we have correlation distribution flow, location, KPI, and hierarchy. For each one, I, I uh, mark which are the uh, most uh, used uh, charts. And for that, I make sure that they follow best practices. So the blue one are following best practices, and this is my go-to, this is what, what I do. And the longer you visit, the more feedback that you get from people, you know what is, what is more effective, what is not effective, uh, what uh, maybe even create bias. So this is like where, what I use. The, the, the common usage will be the boring uh, bar chart uh, eventually. But again, if the data is, 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 uh, is um, interesting and the, your data uh, story is, is interesting, then there is no boring, boring bar chart. Um, and basically you can see the blue ones. This is my go-to. The black ones are limited use, I would say, and I would not use the, the red ones, not the radials. You can see that most of them are the common uh, uh, denominator, which is radial uh, shapes or circles. And we said we are not good of, the, good of uh, comparing them. So 
they are not they are least recommended i hope this answers the question yep uh, thank you thank you a little about it i think this is one interesting question which john is asking he is saying that it seems that things that make uh, with of the day winner are not best practices for corporate sales reports and dashboards right what we go ahead and use in our, our daily a day to day job what elements of wizard today can be scaled right i think what what's your feedback about it how, how do you keep your tableau public profile work different from the work which you go ahead and do in terms of your uh, helping your users in your organization yeah so this is a very good question because there are like two channels for me there is the day job in which i need to generate the business uh, views and there is the um the after job which is like you can really address it like a hobby i'm i'm i told you that i really like to visit and by no means the visits that i do for the day job are very much different from the visits that i do as part of my hobby um i would there is one illustration that okay this one i didn't get to it yet but but this one uh, represents it the best i think so there is the urge to do best for the best per chart uh, to choose the best uh, chart for the data, and you see that the the uh, squares and the the bar charts, and there is the, the urge to do like the, the fancy fees, which we do, uh, which I do for the for the for, the, for my spare uh, time. I want to showcase my tableau capabilities. I have a free uh, space to try and to use like uh, maybe more vivid colors and to use like more uh, uh, sophisticated data visualizations because this is my playground. Business people not in that, that, uh, not, are not need to take a business decision out of it. It doesn't mean that the viz should not be clear, but again, this is like, there's a lot of uh, more room for creativity there. And for the business channel, uh, there is more strict rules. We want to have standard, uh, standardized uh, views. And I think, for me, both channels work like this. I learn new visas, new capabilities from the public, and I try to implement it on my day, day job uh, to prepare like a business views. And I always ask myself, are my visas represent the maximum insight with the minimum uh, story? And with the business time, uh, business case, sorry, it has like more, uh, uh, it's, it's more significant. It's more significant there because people need to actually take uh, business decisions. Uh, they need to um, transfer the insight into actional uh, um, uh, actional uh, actions that will bring a value to the organization. So I use it cautiously. Cautiously, I use the skills that I learned from the um, from the community and from my playground on the public, and I try to um, make them feed feed each other. Uh, the, the business part to make my public business more uh, uh, obvious and not to get too much, too wild with the new visualization and for the business part to take all the skills that I learned from the public from the community and to uh, create new type of visualization to answer uh, business question like in a better way and there again to reach maximum insight with minimal time and effort. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Nir, for that. And I think in the meantime, I will go ahead and wait for others to ask the question. What has been your influence of Tableau community in terms of helping you to improve your data visualization, storytelling skills? Have you participated in any Makeover Monday, Workout Wednesday, or any Tableau community project just to go ahead and build on that particular skill? Yeah, so Makeover Monday was, uh, is a really, really a missed project that we don't have any longer, but at times it was very useful for me. Um, I'll show. So this is my uh, Tableau public. So there are uh, many uh, makeover mondays that i did here uh, it was uh, <clears throat> the where is it
Yeah, so uh, Makeover Monday for uh, Arsenal was a uh, season. Makeover Monday for uh, Bob Ross. There was another project, Health uh, Data Health Viz uh, by uh, uh, Lindsay Batandel, which is also a freshly uh, visionary, uh, I think for the third time as well. I hope I'm not mistaken. Um, that I, 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 part I participated uh, with. And mostly beyond all this uh, um, official uh, um, uh, uh, engagement in the community. Uh, also, I forgot to mention that recently I, uh, there was a great initiative by uh, um, um, there are a whole bunch of uh, uh, people I don't want to miss uh, to, to forget the name of uh, 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 of each one of them. So I'll say that there is the um, uh, Games Night Viz uh, initiative. Uh, which lately I uh, did the Minecraft uh, with uh, along with my son, which was a very uh, great uh, experience for both of us. I learned about Minecraft. He learned about uh, data viz. And again, each time we want to create something new. We don't want to, um, we want to like try experimenting and learn new stuff. So each time we try to, I, I try to have something uh, new and, uh, and implement it. There is a lot of projects in the community. There's a lot of forums in the community. There is very much engagement in Twitter around the Tableau and the uh, data visualization. And also here in Israel, we have uh, an active Facebook group, a local Facebook, uh, Facebook group uh, that, we, that I uh, use uh, a lot and we consult each other. And, <clears throat> and all of this together, all the blogs that people write, all the uh, initiatives that uh, uh, Tableau is, is doing, all of this is like a great, great resource to learn and to uh, uh, enhance uh, the, the capabilities. And I can only be grateful for that. It's really awesome. Awesome, thank you, Nair. And just one last question. Any advice for someone who is just starting new with Tableau? What would be your top three advice for them? First of all, Viz, don't be afraid. Don't think that your work is not good. And I already said it, enhance your toolbox. First of all, um, go to, uh, go to um, Viz, of the, Viz of the Day, go to Tableau Public, follow uh, uh, authors that you find uh, um, that you relate to, subscribe to Viz of the Day, get a daily portion of uh, inspiration. Uh, join uh, uh, groups, uh, ask questions. There is tons of resources, and basically, each time for for uh, mostly each question that you will ask related with the blog, there is someone can help you. There is a, an article or a blog post that uh, someone uh, writes. So just do, do, uh, do visits. Uh, do uh, don't uh, be afraid to publish it. Uh, learn each time. Follow uh, uh, authors that you relate to. Download their visits. Uh, see what are the behind the, of of that. And although Makeover Monday is not uh, um, live any longer, there are tons of projects that you can relate to. You can start with. I think that we have like how many? Maybe six years of uh, weekly uh, visualization and uh, data types that you can go to and download and see like the work that other people uh, did. There is the Workout Wednesday initiative that solely uh, focuses on the uh, enhancing the capabilities. There you don't need to reinvent something. You have like a specific visualization and you need to create something exactly like that. And there is a feedback and there is a videos on how they did that. It's a great initiative. So there's tons of resources. All what you need is to want to do it and dare to do it, and you'll get there. Thank you. Thank you, Nair. I think thank you for uh, coming and sharing about data visualization and still dealing best practices. It was an honor to have you on this connect. I was honored to be attended, to attend, really. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you Perfect. all I'd... for listening. Perfect. Yep, thank you, Nair. With that, thanks a lot, everyone, for attending the session. I think the word is right there, right? Just go for it. I think the inspiration is in your inbox. Just go ahead and subscribe to Viz of the Day and start your journey with Tableau and data visualization and storytelling.
Thanks a lot for attending the session. Stay safe.